Hey guys, Chris Love, the owner of Love to Dev, and I am going over the Philly.net progressive web app. Uh, where's the Philly Code Camp progressive web app? It's just got all the schedule, the, clo the, the session schedules here. And I just wanted to go over in this video how the search and faceted filtering works. Now I'm on the home page here, and as you can see, we've got lots of sessions, but Dang, I, mean, I don't want to have to deal with all of these. This is the, one of the primary reasons why I decided to make this app the first time. I didn't want to have to go through all this, and I doubt you do too. You're looking for certain things. So if I'm looking for Azure, I can type Azure. And these are all sessions that either have Azure in the title or the description. Now, I do think I need to put the session speaker or presenter in that search as well. And so I'll probably do that later today. Uh, um, it's only, right now it's triggered based on once you get past four characters and I realized that I missed last night I need to add so you can hit the enter key so I will also do that today as well now um, let's just uh, let's go back do, 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 do. it's not gonna yeah it doesn't really update based on that anyway all right so I'm just gonna reload and I wanted to show you if I hit that it real-time filters out and that, so what I wanted to do is just see if I could even explain the code to talk about how that piece works. Okay. Oh, yay. See, they were getting prompted to add it because it's a progressive web app. And it should. All right, there we go. There we go. Got the little thing to verify, so it's added to my desktop now. You got to see that live. little bonus coverage there. All right. Now, um... This is the home page. Now, this is the cool thing about this feature, the way I designed it. If you're on a session detail page and you go to search, it's just going to do it right then and there. It's going to replace that session detail. And that may be, it may wind up being a little confusing, but if you're in a progressive web app, if you've got it full screen, you're never going to see the URL anyway, so it doesn't really matter to you. So it doesn't, it's not that big a deal. So, but what we want to do is I want to go down here and just uh, show you the JavaScript references because that'll make a little difference. There, There is a sessions script and then the overall app script. Now the sessions, I tried to make this the one responsible for dealing with the data and the app more for UI. I got a feeling there's a little bit of bleed over between the two of them, uh, at least from the app side, maybe doing a little too much data, but that's okay. We'll deal with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I like to, uh, collapse my code and let's even take that out of the, the equation and what I do is I'm using uh, immediately executing method to uh, abstract or keep this out of the global scope and then I'm just calling this initialize app uh, this is kind of my simple way to do a bootstrapping process now um, I've got the filtered sessions is an initialized array, and then the actual session card template, which I'm going to show you real quick how I go and load those. This initialized faceted search, though, uh, is a little bit involved. If I hit F12, I believe it takes me to the method. There we go. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for um, those checkboxes, and those actually are labels. If we go over here to uh, the index file, and let's minimize that because that makes things easier to find. If you don't know about that, that in Visual Studio Code, that's Control K and open parentheses, which totally makes sense, right, guys? I wish they would have mapped the Visual Studio ones over, but that's okay. I've already forgotten how to use the Visual Studio ones. I think it's Control M zero M M O. <laughs> so, all right. And this is how that's organized. There is an actual checkbox, but the way the CSS works is it shoots that off way off to the side so it's not visible and it kind of works in the background the way the css is set up is how it drives the actual check that's happening here on the label itself and if you notice if you just look at the, the javascript i'm looking for elements that have this class applied and that is what we're doing right here i'm getting all of them so this creates a node array now it's not going to let me do for each here and that's okay um, because this is something that's running in the browser and I can't guarantee the browser supports some of the newer syntaxes, uh, I just go ahead and use var instead of const and let. If you noticed in the node script, I use const and let. Uh, and I do have a video and, or I think I got a video. And 
a blog post on what the differences are between const, let, and var. Definitely encourage you to go read those if you haven't looked into it, and it'll help explain and clear the fog for you. But anyway, so because this is in a browser, I use var, and I'm just going to loop over this. You can't do for each on a node list because it's not supported. It's not an actual array. It's uh, I don't want to get into it, but it's it's a, it's an iterator, I think, or something. But anyway, um, so this is a list of those checkboxes, and then I'm just going to pass that into this method down here to actually do the individual binding. And as you can see, all I'm doing is binding a click event handler. Uh, I used to do go through all the mess with the touch. I actually wrote the deep tissue library, but honestly, the browsers got really good with the click events being fast, so most of the time it's not even needed. So that's why I just do click events now, and that will handle the touch for us as well. Now, um, here I'm getting um, the uh, the I'm getting the attribute value for if we go back over here. That's going to give me this value, and if you notice, it automatically highlighted the checkbox here for that, which means uh, I can. I'm also getting the value, which is the time, and that way it gives me something to manipulate. This will actually select the checkbox, okay? And that's this is important because we have to manually toggle that because the checkbox is way off the screen and the action is not happening on the checkbox, but we need to toggle the checkboxes check to actually drive the CSS, which we'll look at here in a moment. Anyway, so uh, basically if it's not checked, uh, I set it to, uh, or if it is checked, I set it to false and I'm calling into the uh, session data a module and telling it to remove the session time and then it's going to render out the full schedule which is going to go through uh, a little bit of logic which is why when, as soon as you check that uh, and you uncheck the 830 let's say the 830 sessions get removed because this re-renders the whole thing and it's all super fast uh, it's like lightning fast to uh, to do that run it through the mustache library and it just does it for us it's fantastic and of course here's the opposite and instead of removing I'm calling add and again call the same render full schedule and I believe if I hit F12 it'll take me to that method and we can see that that's going to uh, go to again to the session thing get me um, the facet what well, I called it the faceted sessions which are going to be filtered by the times that we've actually got active and then we I called it render home even though I probably should just call it render sessions because originally it was just for the home page but it works on every page and uh, uh, honestly, I had some more logic I was going to put in there, so I think I just found a way to refactor. Yay! Less code. Big win. All right, so here, this is the uh, the the container that will hold all of the cards that are the actual things. Now, notice I'm doing mustache with a capital M, if you recall from the uh, build script uh, video. It was a lowercase m because that's what I named the mustache uh, reference there, but because I'm not actually having to name it, it's just a static object, the uh, the library actually uses uh, mustache with a capital M, and so that's why that's different. Here is our card template, which we uh, retrieve in the initialization via Ajax, and here are the actual results. Now notice I'm, I'm setting those to sessions, and that's because, I believe, over here, I'm using the mustache loop syntax here, and to do that, I needed to do session, give it an actual name. Uh, I think there's a way to do that flat out with an array, but it's I've never quite figured that out. So I always just uh, name the object array so that it loops through those, and that's what's going on here. And uh, so the uh, all I'm doing is the HTML that's rendered via the mustache is just set using the inner HTML. Uh, method which is lightning fast and no must no fuss and it's done and that's in essence how the fasted search works from a UI uh, perspective and uh, just uh, to go back over here to go over our little thing this is going to initialize this is the search functionality and notice right now I'm looking for anything as long as once you're over three um, value uh, characters, then it's going to do that. I also need to check the key code here if it's enter to uh, call this at, at that point as well. And I will add that here sometime after I post this video. 
And essentially, it's calling the same uh, basic thing to uh, it's rendering the search results, which really is the the exact same process. It's no no big deal uh, to go through that. Now, if we go back up to our initialization process here, I'm getting the uh, actual data source of the of all the sessions, and here I am uh, loading the uh, the mustache template via Ajax, which now is actually fetch, uh, and it's just a super simple fetch call to it. It's bringing back uh, HTML, so you use the response text to extract that out of the body. And here I just set it to our uh, session card template variable, which is defined. I know I'm moving fast here, guys, which is defined up here. And that's all there is to that. Then the next step in this stack is to initialize the menu. I won't go over that. That's, uh, um, well, maybe I'll, let's just do that because this is simple. Instead of like a big complicated, I don't know why all these lab, all these UI libraries have these really super complex things. All you're doing is just adding and removing a class. That's all it is to it. So here I'm, I'm doing the... Uh, uh, event binding to the actual menu item, menu uh, thing. Now this isn't here on this one. If we got to go, it's only visible if you've got a small screen. So here we go. All it is is binding the event handler here on the little hamburger, and that makes it move in and out. Why? I see literally hundreds of lines of code to do this. I have no clue, but I matched it up with the bootstrap uh, responsive breakpoint on when that hamburger thing is shown or not shown and that's what's going on here and all we're doing is just toggling that class list on the document body and that will cascade through the CSS. All right so that's uh, just a real quick run through of the UI side of it. Let's go look real quick at some of this because I don't want to spend a lot of time on this but um, I am st persisting stuff like the session um, times in in uh, index DB, and I will be putting uh, the custom schedule builder there when you want to like add your sessions. I got to add that functionality. It may not be today, maybe tomorrow, but it'll certainly be there by Saturday. And that's going to go in index DB. So that's going to be so I've got different keys for those objects, and I've got the default times for all the sessions here. Now, if this was you know, a more complex application. I wouldn't definitely wouldn't hard code this in there. It'd be uh, some sort of data source kind of thing, whatever. But uh, because it was just a fixed thing, I didn't want to overcomplicate it. And it was easy enough just to make a local array and hard code it. Um, here we're getting the actual scheduled data. Again, just calling that single file, getting the JSON, setting it to uh, the camp schedule up here. And that's just a fetch call. If you aren't familiar with fetch, I've got a lot of uh, lessons on that in my progressive web app course. And if you're still using XML HTTP request, you need to stop because that will be deprecated in a few years. And fetch is so much cleaner and nicer. You definitely want to upgrade and change. If you're using libraries or dependencies that do use the old way of doing it, you need to possibly look at replacing those uh, sooner rather than later because you can't necessarily rely on them upgrading for you. So, okay. Um, and if I wanted to get an individual session, which I wound up not doing, so I'll probably wipe this method out. That's doing the same thing to get the individual session file. Uh, this is uh, what I already put in place to uh, allow us to save and get the actual saved sessions. Uh, like I said, our index DB, I just have not wired those up to the UI yet. Uh, shouldn't take very long to do, but I do have the infrastructure for that, it looks like. Now, I'm using local forge to manage my interactions with IndexedDB. Uh, you can look that up it's on GitHub. They also have a really good page that's got some great documentation, which is why I actually chose local forge over a few other options. The other thing is it has methods that make it look like local storage, the local storage API, which I've used quite a bit over the years. But because service workers cannot access uh, local storage, they need the asynchronous nature that IndexedDB has. Um, I've switched over to IndexedDB, plus you get more storage in IndexedDB. Not that I ever really needed it, but it's just nice to know you have that. And here I'm getting the selected times again out of local storage. These are basically just get and set, uh, add, obviously, um, kind of things and remove. Um, I'm not the cleanest on having some sort of, I'm sure there's some 
proper way to do the naming conventions on that, but I'm, I suck at that kind of stuff. So anyway, so here's how we update it. Uh, here's how we get the session times. Uh, this will go through get the uh, faceted session. So what it does is it gets the times and then I'm running a, a quick filter over the array of all the uh, sessions and that will return an array that um, just includes sessions in the selected times based on the faceted search. And that's it. That's all there is to uh, the data management of this. Like I said, I think I found this method we wound up never using, so I will probably wipe that out. But uh, pretty, pretty lean and mean. Uh, both the files combined are less than 500 lines of code. And uh, so that's uh, all there is to it, basically, guys. Um, hopefully this is uh, helpful. I know it's a quick uh, run through of how the code uh, the JavaScript side of the code actually works, and I hope this is good for you. If you got any questions, uh, feel free to leave those in the comments below. Uh, hit me up on Twitter at Chris Love, and if you're in, if you need to learn about uh, doing like a lot of details on progressive web apps, I got a really big course on that. If you hit pwacourse.com, you can sign up for that for just $29, which is a savings of $171 off the regular list price. And right now. As I'm recording this, there's over 21 hours of video uh, instruction on there, and I'm going to be adding a lot more. And if you're going to the Code Camp this weekend, um, I've got a session on Saturday where I'm going to be going through, actually walking through this particular application and uh, doing it real time with you. So thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it.